Get ready. For the next hour, it's your complete breakdown of what everyone is talking about with high school, college, and professional sports. Brought to you by Magnolia Blues, Buckbuster Seed and Company, and Clint's Pharmacy. We are live at Magnolia Blues with your show hosts Ryan Case, Peyton Phillips, and Trey Waterloo with Sports Buzz on B92.1 The Boss. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to what you have been listening to on B92.1 for the last at least month. We'll just go ahead and round it out as a month. You are listening live to Sports Buzz, and we have a great show and a great setup here for you. So let's just go ahead and get uh, get everything out, out of the way that we need to that is uh, that is helpful to this show. First of all, uh, tonight's broadcast is brought to you in part by Clint's Pharmacy, Sullivan Ford Lincoln, Magnolia Blues, and Buckbuster Seed Company. Seed Company is what we're going to – Seed Company. Seed yes. Company, yes. <laughs> so, uh, but we first thing we want to make, uh, make a special thanks here, first of all, is to Magnolia Blues because they are very generously allowing us to broadcast here tonight live from Magnolia Blues. I'm Peyton Phillips alongside Trey Waterloo and Ryan Case. Those may be two names that you've seen around town or, or know a little bit, but let's kind of um, – Get them introed and kind of uh, see what's going on. So, Trey, how are you doing tonight? Man, I'm doing good. And, and if you have not eaten dinner yet tonight, I'm telling you what, they have fed us some pulled pork nachos here tonight. Absolutely the best nachos I've ever had in my life. So if you are driving around town you hear us, come on into Magnolia Blues. They'll serve you up some of these pulled pork nachos, and you can participate in our show tonight. So, Ryan, Ryan Case, fresh to broadcast. You know, Trey and I have done a little bit of Brookhaven Academy uh, broadcast in the past. That's kind of how we came about. So, Ryan Case, uh, Dr. Ryan Case, uh, how are you doing tonight? Let's tell I'm, us. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I have these uh, nachos that look like they were brought out here in the wash basin. It's about five gallons <laughs> it's of them. It's a big and, one. Uh, it's a big is, pile. They are, they are tasty, delicious. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Even the chips are good. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. how sometimes you have nachos and the chips aren't good? These are good. Yeah, yeah it's, they're not it's those uh, thick, hard chips. They're yeah. the light and thin ones. So. What do they call it? Stale chips. It's not those. <laughs> it's, it's good, fresh chips. Yes. They're not the round ones. Fresh, yeah. fresh and thin. Yeah. So what we're um, – let's let's get right into it. See, what, what we're doing here is that uh, the, we have been uh, graciously uh, – given and given the opportunity to uh, give back to the community what everybody is talking about about this time of year starting off is um, all things sports right now we are giving you uh, we are going to be weekly reporting every Monday night right here from Magnolia Blues seven to eight we're going to be giving you all the, the top stories on all levels of sports from local and high school right here in Brookhaven to as far as the West Lincoln Enterprise uh, Bogachita maybe even a little bit of Park Lane down in Macomb and uh, we're not just limited to football. We've got some great things already brewing in the local part and the high school um, level of sports that's just really going to shed some light on some stuff that may not normally get the attention that it deserves. Right. So we are here um, doing that. And then it's the same thing that goes with, uh, with college and then pro. And then we're just going to be entertaining you as best we can up here. We'll be joking yeah. around. We'll be, we'll be eating. We'll be enjoying great music that you've got on in the background here at Magnolia Blues. So... We are uh, great to have uh, everybody here. So um, let's just kind of, uh, you know, talk a little bit about ourselves, I guess. You know, so what what bring, what makes us fit to do that, first of all? So I think the three of us up here are perfect examples of just great fans of, of all the schools that are right here in Brookhaven. Wouldn't you all say, Trey? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we have a great sports base here in Brookhaven, whether it's uh, football, basketball, or baseball, uh, both in – uh, you've got a great softball sports, and so, you know, we get to get out. And we have kids, and they're participating in a lot of these sports, and we get to see them and support all the schools in the local area. It gives a lot to talk about. Uh, and then it's fun to, you know, we're avid college fans as well. Uh, and then uh, professional sports, too. And so I think we get to cover the whole arena here in the, in the hour. The format, the way that I understand that it goes, is we're going to touch on local sports, we're going to touch on college sports, and then we're going to touch on uh, what's going on in the professional sports. Exactly, and yeah. just give some commentary around it. Yeah, it was amazing to me when you get to researching even just the local athletes here. I mean, how many just almost elite level athletes we have in the Brookhaven area just in every sport you know there's kids that are pretty much every year that finish in here going to division one college yeah, to play yeah. just about every sport and um always got a sense here that you know there's a lot of different schools but um in the end i think when the whole community gets behind the uh, athletes here and um, it's it's really a feather in our cap when exactly, somebody yeah. gets to that next level no matter uh, what school they happen to be playing That's at right. in high school. It, I don't know how many it was this summer, college athletes that stayed in the area doing training up at the uh, KDMC Performance Center before the combine. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. There was at least 10 
uh, from you know college area schools here performing before the combine. Is that right? Yeah, and we, you know there's even some uh, pro uh, foot, football players at KDMC doing some training. One um, here at Brookhaven. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad yeah. that y'all told me this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this I'm is forgetting good. Jeremy's name. He's been over to my house a couple of times. He's a defensive tackle for the Cleveland Browns, and um, I think he's going to be a starter this year. Very cool, a great kid. Maybe get him on the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get him down here. Back. Yeah, uh, they, step up, man. <laughs> No, so that actually brings up a good point that you're talking about. Is that, uh, and I think we can kind of just roll into this. Is that uh, one of the top stories that we're going to be covering in high school tonight is the players to watch out for in, okay. our, in our community, which is going to be really good. So, um, in addition to that, so why don't we, we, let, let's go ahead and we can kind of cover that before we go to take our first commercial break. We can uh, kind of give a quick. Um, kind of upfront intro of what we're going to be covering here tonight. So okay. just to kind of go into that. So what I've got for you guys first, uh, first of all, is I'm going to be helping you cover high school here. Uh, we are going to be uh, talking about all of the um, upcoming players uh, to watch. The Primetime 23 was a uh, was an article that was released by the Brookhaven Daily Leader here that had covered uh, a lot of the up-and-coming players across the board from like Boca Chitta. We have a few from Brookhaven High School, Brookhaven Academy, Enterprise, uh, Lloyd Star, West Lincoln, all being mentioned here tonight already to um to to get started so i guess uh that's that's going to be one of that's probably gonna be our closing story for high school tonight here and in addition also on top of that um i got to sit down with coach becky flowers from okay. uh from uh ba uh, who is uh doing an outstanding job right now for the brookhaven academy lady cougar softball team and uh, there's one example right now of how we're not limiting ourselves to one sport we're bringing you softball fast pitch softball for the mais right now at brookhaven academy is uh in the midst of their season already, they've been playing for since July, or at least been practicing since July. So they're they're ready to go. They're knocking it out. They are. They're, 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 they they already played four games. How many they played ten games. So, so ten games. I think they're ten playing like up. three a week. Yeah, they are ten, ten and zero. So we're gonna be we're gonna be talking talking about that here in just a minute. And then finally, uh, the three of us being such big fans of Brookhaven Academy, we are gonna kick off and talk about uh, the Crampton Bowl that yeah. happened this, oh, this, yeah. this past yeah. week that you actually got to go to. So we're gonna, we're gonna listen to you from that, and then talk about everything that Coach Ron Rushing has got. Moving forward, and uh, that new running back coach that they actually have here this year, uh, Nottingham, I believe is his name, uh, if we're going to go from that. And then uh, that's what we've got for high school. So, Ryan, you've got college, so let's give a quick recap of what we're going to be talking about for college. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to, um, if I have time, do a little research and always put kind of a local uh, slant to it. Like mm-hmm. I know um, this, this past year, uh, Trace Clopton and J.J. Jones were both signed to, to USM, so we'll talk about that a little bit, you know, true freshman both of those guys making gonna, waves up there yeah, from what yeah, I hear. going to come in and make an immediate impact which is is which is fairly unusual at that level i mean so they they are are, are uh, really great athletes up there doing great things and um then i'll just kind of delve into um old miss and mississippi state and um probably next week i'll double back to uh the local community colleges here okay. and talk about uh, southwest and coal in because uh, we all know that a lot of times players for whatever reason can't uh, make it to that four-year school right out the bat but those community colleges have really gotten to be great feeder sources for uh, division one schools and so you can go to a community college game and see athletes that you know, belong, five-star recruits. Yeah, that room. belong on Alabama, Alabama but they right. just happen to be, um, you know, in Wesson for for that year. So yeah, we'll, make that safer choice. Yeah. So that's what we got going on for college, Trey. You've got our pros. So what do we got for pro? Well, I mean, I think I, you know, I get to touch on what I think is probably the biggest story of the weekend was, was Tiger Woods' performance um, at the PGA Championship. We'll talk about some of the preseason games from the NFL. Uh, we'll touch on what's going on with baseball. A little NBA news to throw at you. Uh, some update on the tennis and an update from the NASCAR playoff picture. Hmm. So that really kind of, I guess, puts into a little bit of perspective of what we're hoping to bring you for our show tonight. Is that you've got. You've got softball on the local level. You've got uh, football on the local level. You've got uh, intel on who's to watch specifically in our community here in Brookhaven on the local high school high school level. And then you've also kind of got ambitions that those kids may be going to in college. You know, we've got stuff for you coming up right after the, um, you know, for, for college coming up very soon uh, with, uh, with Ryan. And then later on in the show, uh, across the board, what Trey was saying, tennis, baseball, NBA is coming up. Uh, you may throw in a little bit of room, room. NASCAR, NASCAR. No, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you know, fortunately for y'all that are out there that are NASCAR fans, I'm, I'm a lifelong NASCAR fan, so I will make it a point to at least uh, mention that sport yeah. and what's going on with that sport every week. It's, it's always interesting. Yes, yeah, so I that's, think uh, high school girls soccer is going on right now too. So if we don't have anything for this week, we'll be prepared to kind of absolutely. Yeah, we're going to give a point. 
And uh, that's the great thing about what we're going to be doing is that this is going to be developing week to week. We are going to uh, have a brand new show for you each Monday night right here from Magnolia Blues. They're going to be uh, there's great food, there's great music, there's great drinks here. Uh, and all around sports atmosphere is right here at Magnolia Blues. So what we're going to do is that's going to be our quick intro, and we're going to be right back with high school sports coming up right after this two-minute break. You're listening to the Sports Buzz right after this on B92. Stay tuned. Looking for a place to catch the game on Saturdays? Come visit Magnolia Blues Barbecue Company in Brookhaven. With large TVs all around, you can order from a full menu with the best and the biggest nachos in town. Enjoy Wednesday open mic and live music on the weekends. Let Magnolia Blues take care of your next catering event. Open Monday through Friday, 3 to 10, and Saturday, 2 to 10. Magnolia Blues Barbecue in Brookhaven, 505 West Monticello Street. Hunters, entice the big deer onto your food plots with Buck Buster Seed Mixes. You'll find the right mix perfect for seasonal or year-round forage production. It's specifically formulated for the southeast, and they are the most complete and cost-effective seed mixes available. BuckBusterSeedCompany.com Hunters, your food plots will be frequent stops for deer when you plant Buckbuster seed mixes. And the young deer will grow to be trophy bucks with proper nutrition from Buckbuster Seeds. Find out what's in it and where you can get it at BuckBusterSeedCompany.com there is no better place to get all your local and complete pharmacy needs than at Clint's Pharmacy in Brookhaven. Clint's is open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and Saturday, 9 to 12. Come inside and visit the best greeting card selection in town with all cards just 99 cents. But those days you are in a hurry, you can use Clint's convenient and fast drive through line. Now inside Clint's Pharmacy, it's Complete Family Medical, a clinic that takes walk-ins to get you in and out. Clint's Pharmacy, 201 Highway 51 North, Brookhaven. Hello, this is Lavelle Sullivan with Sullivan Ford Lincoln. August is here, and that brings back-to-school football season and Ford summer sales event. With 0% for 72 months plus cash back and no payment for 90 days, there's never been a better time to buy. Bring your trade and trade up to a new Ford while the selection's best. These deals won't last long. Don't miss out. Come see us today or visit online at SullivanFordLincoln.com. Sullivan Ford Lincoln, we're better, we're proving it, and we want you to be the judge. Exit 40, Brookhaven. And welcome back, everybody, to Sports Buzz, coming to you live here from Magnolia Blues. And we are kicking this off the right way with the first set of stories that we've got to you with the local and high school sports. And uh, like I said, like we said earlier, is that we are here um, as fans of Brookhaven schools, as fans of these kids that are playing. And we're here to shed light on um, the success that, that, that they that they deserve. So first of all, let's kind of talk about you, you guys both have kids at uh, – at Brookhaven Academy and are, and are in some sort of sport. So you have you have a daughter who's in cheerleading who's starting this year. Yep. And then you have your son who we I want to go to second because he's got Wait, big. But I, I've also got a daughter in cross country. Too. Okay. Then yeah. Then we'll talk, we'll talk about that as well. You got a daughter uh-huh. in cross country as well, as, as well. So just from y'all's perspective, before we hop into uh, specific sports stories, what has the Brookhaven Academy sports program been for y'all as parents right now? Ryan. Well, um, for me, it's, and I, I'm sure it's like this at the other schools too. I don't have a whole lot of experience to compare with others, but um, to me, I've always appreciated the, the commitment and the effort that the school and the coaches put into the programs. It's not just, okay, we're going to have a sport team and we're just going to go through the motions of it. They find people that really want to have success, people that um, can really take your child and develop them as an athlete and that's that's been my experience at, at BA and um, people that I look up look up to people that I want to be uh, influencing on my uh, children and so it's been a great experience for me um, you know it, it's nice uh, for your kids to uh, be able to just participate in multiple sports and uh, for my my son and daughter that's that's kind of um, been a key thing for them and um you know, the, the coaching staff and everybody from the administration, um, I think, put a high priority on athletics, uh, not to the detriment of academics, and um, but that's just something that I've appreciated. And it's um, you get support from, you know, folks that have graduated uh, in the past, just a real, um, you know, the uh, 
Cougar Blue come come out for the sporting events, and we've we've enjoyed that. Yes, absolutely. Trey, what do you think? Man, for us, it's a, you know a lot of participation. Uh, for us, uh, you know, my kids have have varied in their sporting uh, outings throughout their life, not been just serious athletes. Sure. And, you know, coming into Brookhaven Academy last year, Mary Ray uh, played fast pitch softball uh, for the first time. And what was so shocking to me is the just the overall welcoming environment. Yeah. And although it's competitive, um, it certainly allows kids the opportunity to um, – work on these sports and work on work as a team yeah. and that's been for us and then you know evelyn this year is running uh cross country and then mary ray's a cheerleader now her, her softball career was short-lived was one and done yeah, yeah. yeah one and done one and done <laughs> <laughs> and she's she's now full-time cheerleader yeah um but it's, a, it's just a great school environment a lot of school spirit a lot of participation by not only the students that are participating but a, a very active student body mm-hmm. uh, and what is going on with yeah. the sporting events so we love to love traveling well, you said part of it, and you said part of the other one. So that uh, we'll, 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 that'll kick us off into what, what is our first official story here for for high school. Uh, I got to sit down this early, earlier or that late late last week with uh, Coach Becky Flowers from the uh, softball team. Both of y'all know who uh, that's the head coach oh, yeah. for the Lady Cougars yeah, softball yeah. team, and they are uh, in the midst of their season right now. They are ten and zero. And uh, they have beaten schools, uh, Kapaya, Natchez Cathedral. I think they've beaten a couple schools out of, or, or a school out of Bowling Green right now. They are 10-0. and 0. So um, already these girls have, have a winning mentality. They have a winning season. They have the ambition and the drive that is already giving them the, um, the, the foremost drive, basically, to, to continue to win. So um, just a few quotes that I remember talking from Becky, and then we can kind of just talk about like what, what to expect just early on in this season is uh, – you know, they are – Becky is really not setting a whole lot of um, specific expectations. What she's, she really wants is just girls who come out and love the game. And that's what I think you got. Wouldn't you guys agree? I mean, when it comes to anything yeah. at that level, you just got to love it. Yeah, I mean, if you're a kid and you really don't love what you're doing, you're not going to put the work in to get better and right. compete. And that's been, you know – and I think as, as kids age, they may play more sports and then, you know, a couple – sports rise to the top and but it's it at any level even if you're good a very skilled and talented athlete it is so much work even at just the high school level to compete around here in any sport that's right and um so th- these girls not only have been uh, are playing well but they've been ready to play since july they came out of the gate uh i think july 9th was their first practice that they have so they've been uh, in that day they were uh, they were doing hitting drills they were doing fielding drills they were doing catching drills everything to just to kind of get out in front and they're dressing out Give, give, give or take, uh, 28 girls yeah. this this season, but two of those are seniors. So what that sheds some light on is that Pretty if they're young, doing right? this successful, exactly, yeah. they're very young. Uh, I think they're dressing out upwards of 20, out of the 28, 24 are uh, in between 6th and 8th grade. Yeah. That's who we have. You know, and I, you know, I got to go to a lot of their games last year, which they had a successful season last year, you know, competed in the, in the state tournament, or third in the state, I believe, which was the best they've ever done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a very young team. I mean, you got Maddie Smith, number five, uh, making a huge impact last year as pitcher, um, yeah. which I know she's doing that again. I have not seen a game yet this year, but <clears throat> just and they're great hitters. All of them were young. You know, I think they had two or three seniors last year. Mm-hmm. So that gives you an indication of how young they are. It is a stocked Brookhaven Academy Lady Cougar softball team. Yeah, yeah. it's it's um, they, they are something to watch. If you had not got out uh, to watch them yet, I would encourage everybody to get out there and watch them play because it is definitely some high-level um, softball, and you'll get your 4 or $5 worth without a doubt. Well, so, you, yeah. you get those legendary uh, B.A. Cougar hamburgers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, good at the, you know, not to not to be overshadowed by these nachos yeah, here Mac- at Magnolia yeah. Blues. That's right. Uh, in addition, with the, of those twenty eight girls we talked about, they have two seniors, so we do want to uh, give them the the credit that have been leading their teams. Janet Case and Morgan Smith coming out and leading their team uh, this year as well. So I always want to um, supply uh, or not supply uh, shed some light on uh, the two uh, the two seniors that we have uh, this year. Um, also, um, Kaylee Burgess, uh, Haley Krill, and Abby Grace Richardson, brand new to Brookhaven Academy. You okay, know, they're 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 coming from neighboring schools, so we are, um, you know, looking at that um, them coming in as well. So let's roll into uh, also at BA that you could probably kick us off on a little bit with the Crampton Bowl last week. How's uh, BA's football looking? Oh yeah, this uh, past Saturday, BA was invited to play in uh, the MAIS Mississippi Academy of Independent okay. Schools. They have a whole southeastern association, you know, interstate association, and they 
They played uh, Montgomery, Alabama, played uh, Thomas Hayward Academy, which I believe is a 4A school from South Carolina, so a little larger school, and this is also a team that's kind of competed every year for the state championship there. there. So we came up short in that game. Um, you know, I, I think uh, – for the most for the most part it can be kind of viewed as a as a preseason game i think the coaches were kind of seeing what they had they weren't delving too far into the um playbook and and that sort of thing so uh made it out uh without a whole lot of injury so that that was good and um i know they're hard at work uh this week getting prepared for natchez cathedral that will open up um friday and, and, and play at natchez yeah. so we hosted them last year for for our opener and um started off great uh but wound up falling short in that um, contest so we're hoping for a hoping for a different result this year we think we have the uh, kids to get it done we know we have the, the coaching staff to uh, to get it done so um, that'll be a that'll be a good one to watch over in Natchez. Uh, well, you know, I don't think we would be a very credible sports program talking about local sports if we didn't at least mention how did Corey do this week? Yeah, of course, Corey. Uh, well, you know he and I'm talking about Corey, Corey Case. Case. Yeah, yeah. Talking yeah. about the Doc's son. He has been at Penn State uh, several times this summer. Yeah, well, uh, kicking. I, he is he is an absolute weapon for the VA Cougars. Yeah, he, he work he works on it a ton. He really does, and. Um, you know, there's some there's some things that that uh, from that game that he needs to clean up. So I'll, I feel free to be critical of my own son there. I may pay for that later when I get home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your door is going to be locked on your way when you get yeah. home. Yeah. Don't don't uh, don't don't push away our fan base. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, he he worked. Cr- credit to him, he works on it a ton. And I was never that driven about uh, anything, quite honestly, when I was 14 years old. And so, in a lot of ways, um, Corey's a good example for. What, what do you think the range is, um, you know, for new offensive coordinator Jamie Palmer to, to make a decision on third down or fourth down before, you know, whether going for it or, or punting or, or giving Corey a chance to, to kick it to the uprights? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know if early in the season if it's, it's a little more conservative, but I would think somewhere 45 yards and inside that he – he should be. Years old, he should be <laughs> pretty pretty reliable, you know. Um, and it's you know kicking's a um, it's a team sport too. You know, you got a snapper, a holder, and a blocker. Yeah, you got to be in um, sync, yeah, right. across the line, yeah, with everything. And so it's 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 definitely a, a credit to them um, when they get that when they get that done. And I think Tate rushing is snapping for them. And, Tyler Fortenberry's holding um, this year, and so those guys do a great job right, at, yeah. at that at that position. And it's hard to, you know, special teams in high school. It's kind of hard because the coaches have so much other stuff to coach, and it's kind of you know, it's hard to, to get the reps in that you need for right. that. But they've they've done a great job with it. So. Yeah. So um, we know that Brookhaven Academy is going to be slinging it this year a lot, just judging from there. I think there were like, what, four wide uh, trips right a lot uh, and a lot of empty plays that, da- that uh, quarterback Dawson Flowers is going to be leading on that one. But uh, speaking of Dawson Flowers, he's actually going to be one of our uh, players to watch this year, and that will roll us into our final story here for the high school uh, portion of our show. Uh, we're just going to run through quick stats that we have from last year that is kind of building up into into okay. this year to what we have here. So uh, uh, starting off, uh, Bogachetta, we have Jermaine Black as a senior linebacker. He was uh, – I remember seeing him a couple times play uh, last year, or at least hearing about him, a great um, – Attack in the box kind of guy. He was right. uh, he, he was he was um, playing last year, and he would uh, really uh, capitalize on the sacks that we have here. We have Zach Upkins, who's a junior wide receiver. He had 27 catches for 364 yards last year. He plays defense. Uh, caught a uh, 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 stat at one interception last year. We have Demarcus Godbold, who's a senior running back. Um, he played running back, fullback, defensive end, and linebacker last year. I actually got to see uh, call a couple games um, a couple seasons ago. I called the Lloyd Star games with Greg Russell. Okay, and I got to see Demarcus Godbold play uh, Bogachid, and he, I'm talking about a dynamic runner. Even what three you said three yeah. years ago? Mm-hmm. So two really, years, two seasons. Ago. Okay, cool. So uh, he's it, it's, a, it's a hard thing to, for me to imagine with a lot of these kids. Is is a lot of them, especially at at um, some of the smaller schools, they play both sides of the ball. That's that right. just seems so exhausting it's to me. Stamina, I mean, you've got to have it. I mean, and it's hot. Look, all I mean, year, it's real hot, all season. All yeah. yeah. Uh, Demarcus Godbolt will do uh, who we were just talking about. Two hundred nine yards rush last year and thirty four tackles. So you know, um, very present on the offensive yeah. side and, all, and equally present on the defensive side. 
Uh, for Brookhaven High, we have Coker Wright, who's a senior linebacker. He switched from offensive line to de- uh, defensive line this year. Uh, currently has uh, offers from 24 colleges. In, wow. Is that a lot? Uh, it's it's, it's <laughs> no. less than 25, <laughs> more than 23. It's not two to four. It's not all, It's not – It's uh, when he says offers, plural, it's not just – three or two offers right, right. 24 offers from college from 24 separate colleges uh john hilbert who's a senior wide receiver had 525 yards 31 catches and nine touchdowns last year savante quinn who is uh i've seen play baseball in addition okay. to football so he's not only um dominating in the in the football position he's also on baseball as well he rushed for more than 150 yards in two playoff games last year completed 88 of 179 passes for over 1400 yards 21 touchdowns Rush for 676 yards uh, for 116 carries. That's, and that's as a junior. That's as a junior. All mm-hmm. these, yeah, all these people that we have right here that you're hearing this are coming back, even for what we have coming up uh, for Brookhaven Academy. Just got talking about Nick Ogden, junior linebacker, had over 100, ta- 100 tackles last year. Mm-hmm. Dawson Flowers, our senior quarterback, uh, threw for over 2,000 yards, had 26 touchdowns with only 12 interceptions last year. That happens, we know, yeah. obviously. Cade Brown, senior wide receiver. We, we recognize his name from basketball as well. He's um, very present at uh, football. Caught 67 passes, over 1,100 yards for 14 touchdowns last year. I think uh, I think Cade is on the MAIAS. Oh, correct. Yeah. Squad, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's on yeah, that, unbelievable receiver. That's oh, what man. he was awarded he, this he year. He goes up and yeah. get it. I mean, he can he can jump. Like and he's he not. He, yeah. He's got, he's got he's, great hands. He wouldn't be that tall either. I would imagine. Oh, I don't he's know, what, five, six, four, six, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I must be thinking of someone else. Then. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, he's up there. If he's if he's going up there to get that many. Uh, out of Enterprise, we've got Josh Milholland. He's a senior. He's the center, so he's uh, kind of starting off the line. Uh, Taylor Young, junior lineman, fifty three tackles, five sacks during the freshman year. Uh, rushed for 400 yards and had 30 tackles during his sophomore year, which was cut short due to that concussion that he got last year. So we're hoping that he comes back and makes up for that. Uh, Lloyd Starr, we have Quan Berry, who is a senior running back and quarterback. Uh, Zach Neville, senior defensive back. Riles Hester from uh, is a senior center off from Lloyd Starr. And last, our, one of our uh, last county schools, West Lincoln, Cam Buckles, Grant Jackson, and Michael Brothern, all um, j- uh, spread across the line with linemen, running backs, uh, just – Really stellar stats that we're seeing from all of our kids here, uh, here in our local schools uh, that we're so so proud of and so ready to report more on when we get when we get the opportunity to do it. So um, I think that'll do it for us here uh, for the high school segment. So what we'll do is we're gonna take another quick two minute break and be right back with college coming up right after this. You're listening to Sports Buzz right here live from Magnolia Blues on B92. Stay with us. Hello, this is Lavelle Sullivan with Quick Lane Tire and Auto. It's back to school time, and that means getting your vehicle ready to travel for football. Right now, you can get up to $160 mail-in rebate and 90 days same as cash on new tires. These are never seen before savings, and there's never been a better time to buy, and we will meet or beat any competitor's advertised price on any of the 13 brands we're the authorized dealer for. Quick Lane Tire and Auto, next door to Sullivan Ford Lincoln, exit 40, Brookhaven. There is no better place to get all your local and complete pharmacy needs than at Clint's Pharmacy in Brookhaven. Clint's is open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and Saturday, 9 to 12. Come inside and visit the best greeting card selection in town with all cards just 99 cents. But those days you are in a hurry, you can use Clint's convenient and fast drive through line. Now inside Clint's Pharmacy is Complete Family Medical, a clinic that takes walk-ins to get you in and out. Clint's Pharmacy, 201 Highway 51 North, Brookhaven. Looking for a place to catch the game on Saturdays? Come visit Magnolia Blues Barbecue Company in Brookhaven. With large TVs all around, you can order from a full menu with the best and the biggest nachos in town. Enjoy Wednesday open mic and live music on the weekends. Let Magnolia Blues take care of your next catering event. Open Monday through Friday, 3 to 10, and Saturday, 2 to 10. Magnolia Blues Barbecue in Brookhaven, 505 West Monticello Street. Deer hunters, looking for the best fall seed mix on the market? Buck Busters has 36% protein, contains 8 varieties of winter forage in the basic mix, and 11 varieties in the premium mix. One bag does one acre. It's specifically formulated for the southeast. Contact your local seed dealer or Buck Busters at buckbusterseedcompany.com or call toll-free 1-800-562-457. Buck Busters, the most complete and cost-effective seed mixes available.
Welcome back to the Sports Buzz on B92 uh, FM, live at Magnolia Blues, uh, bringing you the latest in local sports here. Uh, I've just finished up the high school segment and kind of going to jump into uh, some college football stuff and try to bring a little bit of a local slant to it. The um, first thing I think that's kind of uh, foremost on a lot of folks' mind at McCaven is the two folks from BHS that signed early um with USM, uh, Trace Clopton and J.J. Jones. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, J.J. Jones, a cornerback, out, you know, about 6'1", 190, uh, really one of USM's top overall recruits. He yep. had offers from a lot of big SEC schools, okay. but opted to uh, to go to uh, USM and is um, expected to start as a true freshman and make a, a real impact for right. them. So, That'll, that'll be fun to watch him out there, um, the Brookhaven connection there, playing at the Rock. Um, and Trace Clopton, um, another local standout. Um, he, uh, I think, graduated high school um, after the first semester, and so he was there at USM for, for spring training. Uh, that's yeah. that's going to help him. Yeah. Well, I and, remember reading some articles about him and the impact he was making in spring training, and it's like he kept moving up the depth chart. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I, well, the article that I had, the last one I read was maybe – 60, 90 days ago, and I think he was second on the depth chart. Yeah. I think that's changed again. Yeah. I think um, he's first now? I think he's first. I don't, you know, I don't have a whole lot of inside information, but the thing I'm, stuff I'm reading is he's, you know, he's the presumed starting center for them, um, which is pretty amazing as a true, oh, true man. freshman. I yeah. Mean, and he's, you know, from uh, what I know, I mean, he's a great, great kid, great athlete, great work ethic. I mean, kind of. He's a great leader. I yeah. mean, that's what I've heard. You know, Coach Clopton obviously was a great leader of men as the mm-hmm. former BHS coach. Now he's the athletic director. Is that? I think that's correct. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, you know, I think just everything that I've read or heard about Trace is just this is top, top notch kid. Yeah, one of those, you know, I think in, in, in the biz- coaches are looking for the same thing we're looking for in the business world, high right. production, low management. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> right. he's definitely one of those kids. So that'll that'll make it a little more fun to watch uh, USM play this year with that local um, connection there. And being a true freshman to take on that responsibility that early, I mean, like, great that he was there for spring training, but uh, like we said earlier, for for recorded kicking, you know, that center has got to start everything off. Oh, yeah. As a true freshman, he's got to go to from that high school level. BHS is a pretty loud environment, and, you know, a little pretty loud school, so go from that environment to, to USM um, as a true freshman, and, and starting off as a center is going to be um, the tall task. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a great word for it, I think. So, yeah, we're um, Definitely keep our eye on him. Absolutely. Good deal. Well, um, kind of switching gears here a little bit. I know we have a, lo- a lot of. Um, no, he's going to start with the Bulldogs. Yeah, a lot of local Bulldog we'll fans. Here. We <laughs> got to do that. That's no doubt that Dan's rolling. I, I think this. Uh, guy I wore my Ole Miss shirt for you, Coach. Yeah. I mean, go. Doc, you see, Doc. Look at it. <laughs> yeah, I think you're a closet uh, state fan, if I had to guess. But that's a that's a closet you don't want to be in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, they. You know, they are, I think they are primed for a great year uh, this year. Have 17 starters returning, nine on offense, eight on defense, real experienced team. One of the big uh, storylines there is uh, Coach Moorhead, uh, Joe Moorhead coming from Penn State. Great uh, hire. Is their offensive hire. coordinator. It's a little bit of an unconventional choice. You know, I think a lot of times going out and, and and trying to find somebody that's already been a head coach and that sort of thing. He's, mm-hmm. I think he was a head coach at a, a smaller school, but this will be his first job in a, a power, one of the Power Five conferences as a head coach. But, you know, that pedigree coming from uh, Penn State under James Franklin, I mean, the, you know, I think it was a – I really think it was a great, great choice for them. And it'll be interesting to see how um, the offense changes – with him, you know, I think this year Nick, Nick Fitzgerald's expected to run a little less. Um, I think he's fully recovered from that injury, but um, hopefully they'll be able to get the, the running backs involved in the passing game a little bit more and take some of that pressure off of him. Well, and, uh, and Nick run. Fitzgerald, I mean, really is going to be one of the top quarterbacks in the SEC. Yeah, of course, yeah. You know, he and, – and that's – I know Dak was still on the heels of having Dak Prescott, but so often – um, the Bulldogs come up short in the, Q- in the QB area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it is it's going to be really interesting to see what a coach like Moorhead can do with a with a talent like Fitzgerald. Yeah, and I think a lot of folks feel like the year before last that looked like he was really knocking it out of the park. And then last year may have been a little bit ho-hum. And then he, 
you know, and so now everybody wants to see is is he going to really go on and develop into an NFL quarterback? Yeah. You know, this year, and so uh, I think for him, it actually probably be good to get another, you know, to get somebody else's experience. Um, you know, um, well, and just to bring in some, uh, I think the coach will bring in. Some, you know, obviously, something was has been brewing with Dan Mullen for years about, you know, did he really want to be there or was he looking to, you know, go somewhere else? And I think it's good to have a coach like Moorhead come down here to Mississippi and take on a program like the Bulldogs and want to be here. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Moorhead um, was um, – I think all the schools were doing this, in the SEC, I know especially in the SEC from Arkansas to Ole Miss and uh, Mississippi State, but they just recently had the, the media day, you know, where they, they, yeah. they address the media and they talk about uh, – uh, everything that's been going on in spring training and, and spring practices right before they hit full pads. And uh, Mississippi State um, was out with Joe Moorhead, and he was talking about uh, the goals that they're setting uh, for this year. And I think they're they, it, it's like any other team you're wanting to set a, set a goal for. I think sure. they're trying to um, – they're working on situation football in each uh, – in each area, as far as uh, special teams, defense, offense, they're doing like for instance, offense. They're trying to uh, average and at least at full contact get a twelve yard run every time. Uh, Fifteen yard passes, uh, as far as um, just hitting hitting the ground running that way. They're trying to. That's what at least Joe Moorhead has addressed to the to the public is uh, what what they're doing. They, that was fresh off their uh, their first scrimmage game that they had this past weekend on August uh, August eighth, I believe, was the day. Yeah. So Moorhead is. Uh, Already uh, ready to um, just push his program forward and keep it going because he's uh, like he came out with numbers like twelve yard runs, fifteen yard passes, and things like that that are uh, that are already he's he's fixated on. Well, and that's one of the things the Bulldogs need is precision. Mm-hmm. You know, they always as a fan of football and just watching, you can always count on them to beat themselves in some areas. You know, they'll 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 have a hot start, and then they'll t- do some turnovers. They're just they're good to beat themselves a little bit. Yeah. So I think yeah. have a coach like that be phenomenal i think one of the things too is coming from coming from penn state um you know who really but uh, teams like that you know long history you know no recent national championship but you know just the um the sports legacy there is incredible they're pretty much a nationally recruiting team sure i mean if they can get somebody from pennsylvania they will so I'll be curious to see how much of an impact that has on recruiting in M- MSU. If that may change the the view the viewpoint yeah, yeah, yeah. of it a little bit, we're maybe casting a little wider wider net. Well, so. I just you know I need you to go ahead and give me some uh, some of that headache medicine <laughs> because I, if those cowbells start ringing at a high yeah. volume this year. <laughs> I'm going to be calling you. Yeah, uh, Mississippi State. What coming in preseasonally ranked at? Uh, 18, I believe. Um, uh, 14, I've 14, I read. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, Last thing I was, he found the one where they were ranked the highest. Yeah, I guess yeah, you would do that. Yeah. Appreciate that. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually a Golden Eagle, but there you uh, go. But my son likes Mississippi State, so we'll well, I, would, I didn't know more. that. All I see is maroon. I've yeah, never seen yeah. you sport the uh, the black and gold. Man, I, you ought to take a look at my closet, man. You got all sorts of stuff in there. He's not a, he's not a closet Mississippi State <laughs> right, fan. Right, he's, okay. a, he's a closet USM guy. Well, that's good to know. Uh, well, to sw- not to switch gears and take anything away from it, but we've got also, uh, you get your USM, Ole Miss, Arkansas Razorback fan right I here. knew you were going to try. I was yeah, about I was to splash try it to in. Sneak that in. About to splash it in. So all I'll, all I'll cover right now is that uh, Chad Morris, uh, brand new quarterback from SMU in the Mustangs this year, is is brand new, looking to prove himself. Uh, he was also at his media day this past weekend that was uh, discussing a few things. Things. They're fixing to hit full pads, and they're fixing to do a lot oh, of wait, contact. Wait, are they, do we need to take a commercial break? Well, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Let's. <laughs> I'm kidding. Do we? Do we? Do we? Do we? Do we, do we, do we, do we you want to take no, in the middle of that? I'm, I'm messing with you. Okay, I'm messing with you because yeah. you're talking about Arkansas. No, we're we're doing this now. I mean, if we're if we're maybe live broadcast from Mississippi State, but we're going to be talking a little bit about the Razorbacks. Chad Morris is uh, proven himself. He has bringing a lot of people with him. He's Y'all def- get that, Chad Morris. Chad Morris. Chad from, Morris. Yeah, from uh, Razorbacks is. Uh, He's got all his teeth. Yeah, he does. all his most of his teeth. Uh, we are going to take a break. <laughs> so uh he's um wait do they have a isn't there a new coach it's chad morris oh it's chad morris yeah it is chad. i'm okay It'll, uh the, he's got the defensive coordinator that's from that was from lsu uh that was underneath les miles for years and is uh he's getting ready to uh kind of prove himself on that as well so uh he's talked about a few injuries they're having to kind of go from and uh you know they're i think they're, they're playing eastern illinois uh colorado state and north texas the first three games so Kind of a couple of tune-up games, if you think about it. Uh, not play, I mean, because they hit Auburn week four, so hopefully they'll be able to shake off any type of cobwebs. Because 
what Arkansas hasn't had in the last five years at all is consistency in right. the head coaching. You know, that whole Bobby Petrino thing, and then we rolled into John L. Smith, uh, who was the special teams um, coach, who was the interim well, that, that wasn't even a full season. It was. Okay. He was halfway through. And then Brett Bielema, who hey, had – But let me just tell you, it doesn't matter who's coaching the Arkansas Razorbacks, you're going to beat the Ole Miss Rebels. That's ex- I was I was, <laughs> I was, one, I was one to get, get to I that. I know the reality. Yeah, yeah, we get it. Yeah, so uh, I've lived through – too many of those games. That's actually being played at the Little Rock Stadium this year, which is going to be a fun atmosphere because uh, Chad Morse has not been able to play there. Uh, or I think that's going to be his first game there. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to that. So, anything else on Ole Miss College? college what you got, right? You got a new mascot, right? Looks like oh, guys man, y'all are Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. The, 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 land, the, the land yeah. shark. Y'all, y'all, that's, y'all haven't had consistency at mascot in the last five years. <laughs> we definitely had some inconsistency at mascot. Here's the thing. Um... The, the the land shark, uh, throwing the land shark, throwing the fin up is something that just took on a life of its own at Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. That wasn't forced by the student body or forced by uh, you know anybody throwing that down. Yeah, uh, it was the grassroots. Fans throat. Uh, it was grassroots. It kind of came up. And to be honest, I mean the shark looks a little weird. There's no doubt. I mean I'll admit it. He's real futuristic looking. Yeah. But I do Star think Star Wars. I do think the shark. <laughs> I think the shark will take. You yeah. think so? You think it'll catch yeah, on? A lot of people it's are no excited different. About it's no it. different than the, the Crimson Tide having the elephant. I guess that's I mean, true. It's kind of the Hopefully, same. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, us in Alabama, we're similar. Yeah. Anything else we got on Ole Miss? You want to? What, what do we got? Well, um, you know, I guess, I guess for them, the expectations may well, be. Why do you have a whole entire page for MSU, and you have like three sentences for Ole Miss? <laughs> because I knew you were here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Say well, same question, but why do you have a whole page of Ole Miss and a little bit of blur? I don't have anything. I'm, I'm going. I'm going natural. Anyway, anyway. Oh yeah. So what we got, Ole Miss? Yeah, uh, just real quick. I think we know that uh, Shea Patterson is now at Michigan. But, no, but for them, he's uh, not there. Huh? Shea Patterson? What do you mean? Well, you said you were there. Not, he's there. Shea he's Patterson. not the quarterback. No, he is not. He is not. <laughs> I'm speaking for the the casual um, the casual sports listener Trey, not the uh, old best faithful. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Jordan Tiamu, who uh, came in and how do you pronounce his last name? Tiamu. Tiamu. Yeah. So um, you know he's a senior dual threat guy. So I think he's gonna you know get right in there. He um, uh, went five and two and uh, won the egg ball. So you know he did I win the egg ball. That's a feather in his cap. So. <laughs> Um, I think we're about out of time for this segment, so we'll uh, we'll we'll be right back uh, live here from Magnolia Blues on the Sports Buzz on B ninety two. Hunters, entice the big deer onto your food plots with Buckbuster Seed Mixes. You'll find the right mix perfect for seasonal or year-round forage production. It's specifically formulated for the southeast, and they are the most complete and cost-effective seed mixes available. BuckbusterSeedCompany.com. Hunters, your food plots will be frequent stops for deer when you plant Buckbuster Seed Mixes. And the young deer will grow to be trophy bucks with proper nutrition from Buckbuster Seeds. Find out what's in it and where you can get it at BuckbusterSeedCompany.com. Looking for a place to catch the game on Saturdays? Come visit Magnolia Blues Barbecue Company in Brookhaven. With large TVs all around, you can order from a full menu with the best and the biggest nachos in town. Enjoy Wednesday open mic and live music on the weekends. Let Magnolia Blues take care of your next catering event. Open Monday through Friday, 3 to 10, and Saturday, 2 to 10. Magnolia Blues Barbecue in Brookhaven, 505 West Monticello Street. Hello, this is Lavelle Sullivan with Sullivan Ford Lincoln. August is here, and that brings back-to-school football season and Ford summer sales event. With 0% for 72 months plus cash back and no payment for 90 days, there's never been a better time to buy. Bring your trade and trade up to a new Ford while the selection's best. These deals won't last long. Don't miss out. Come see us today or visit online at SullivanFordLincoln.com. Sullivan Ford Lincoln, we're better, we're proving it, and we want you to be the judge. Exit 40, Brookhaven. There is no better place to get all your local and complete pharmacy needs than at Clint's Pharmacy in Brookhaven. Clint's is open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and Saturday, 9 to 12. Come inside and visit the best greeting card selection in town with all cards just 99 cents. But those days you are in a hurry, you can use Clint's convenient and fast drive through line. Now inside Clint's Pharmacy is Complete Family Medical, a clinic that takes walk-ins to get you in and out. Clint's Pharmacy, 201 Highway 51 North, Brookhaven. All right, 
Welcome back to Sports Buzz on B92. So we're going to take it right into some of the professional sports that have been happening. Hopefully y'all have enjoyed some of the local yeah. sports commentary and the college commentary. But definitely the biggest thing that happened this weekend uh, for any sports fan was uh, kind of the return of the Tiger Roar. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, and I'm a, a big Tiger fan. Um, not a great golfer, but a big Tiger fan. So I, I was watching... Uh, on Thursday when he started his round and uh, was plus three after two two holes, right? So yeah, think, He just makes golf cool, doesn't he? That's I mean, right. Yeah. There's no doubt. And so he starts off plus three, goes into the Port of John, changes his shirt, and comes back out and, and basically ends the round at, at even, right? Cool. Look at that. So yeah. it's pretty, it pretty remarkable kind of comeback there. Now if you just think if you have just parred those first two holes, yeah. he would have won. But, um, you know, started on Sunday, uh, eight. At, uh, minus eight, and the leader was at twelve, so he was four back, and uh, ended the round at fourteen. Um, the, and uh, Bruce Kepka won at sixteen, but it was absolutely. Uh, he it, 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 here's an interesting thing: he did not hit a fairway on the front nine. Hmm. Bunk- so like, when he was just scrambling around, rough, bunker and everything like that. Oh, he was just everywhere. <clears throat> but uh, he just you know struggled with the driver a little bit. But that's just his. That's just his talent. As, as, you know, he, but he's, he ended. Uh, he got three birdies on the front nine. So then you know to finish his round. Uh, interesting statistic: uh, it, he finished with a 64 yesterday, which was his lowest round in a major championship. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then his score of 66 on Saturday. Um, which was and then his 66, uh, which was a com- combination of Friday Saturday because of weather. So he went uh, 66, 66, 64. His last three rounds, lowest score uh, in his his professional career. His professional career, yeah, out of the tournament for the, right. for the latter right. three rounds. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't follow golf a whole lot, but um, I mean, do you th- was this an anomaly for him, or do you think he's back? It's a great question. I mean, that's a, the you know that's uh, that's the that's the million dollar question. You know, he made the comment that you know, no one with a few spine is doing has ever done what he's doing. Um, that's what I was about to ask. Mm-hmm. I want to get my timeline down and kind of get this. Uh, did, he and again, I don't really follow golf that much, that much uh, either. But uh, he what tore his ACL or something like that last year? Or lower no, back? No, that, was, uh, that, was, that was a you know, he's got always had he's had knee problems forever. Yeah. So he's had several knee surgeries. I don't know the number, but it's a lot. Okay. Um, going back to when he was, you know. Probably starting off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, but he had four back surgeries since 2016. And so this last time that he was out, um, so he didn't play for two years. And, you know, last thing's out. And, and here we are, fast forward now to answer your question about do I think he, he, he number one, I think he's going to win again. Um, the thing that he, he changed the world of golf so much, um, the way that he played golf, that he's really created – um, the way that golfers play now. You know, you've got these guys like Bruce Keppa hitting it 30, 340 yards in the air straight down the fairway. Well, it's hard to beat that. It, oh, just, yeah. it absolutely yeah. is. And, and they're a creation of what Tiger started. I mean, they're really little Tigers in a lot of sense, the way that they play. Um, and so now he's going to have to deal with them, what he, what he created. And you know, it just shows you how good they are that he played some of his best golf ever in a, fi- in, a in a major and came up to too short. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think he will. I do think he will win. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with the rest of the season. You know, the season's pretty much over, but you got Ryder Cup coming up and you got the FedEx playoffs coming up. Um, so what will be the next time to kind of see him? Uh, it'll. I don't know if it's Thursday or if it's next week, but it's the, it's the FedEx, FedEx playoffs. He's already said it's going to be the most golf that he's played in years in kind of back-to-back-to-back spans. So it's going to be interesting to see how he holds up. Um, if he can find his driver, um, he's definitely got his short game and uh, his putting and his wedges and uh, his iron play. You think, it's just, you think he's still having to deal with that, that force with a drive not getting to where it needs to be? Which I mean, he injury. can hit it far. I mean, he's hitting it. He's got it's different points of the season. He's had uh, this you know, fast speed with the with the golf club, which causes the you know the drive to go. He's had that. It's kind of fallen off a little bit since he started, but. It's going to be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, what does it what does it do to a forty two year old to play like that? Sure. I mean, obviously he's in better shape than the three of us, but um, <laughs> yeah. it, it's interesting and it's Speak phenomenal. For There's nothing. You know, <laughs> they they were even showing it's you know driver a little further. They were there. showing the PGA Championship all over, and here's the Tiger effect. Um, overnight ratings for the, the for the TV viewership up sixty nine percent over last nice, year. Yeah. Think yeah, about he's, comeback he's, story. He's a uh, he's a gold mine for the economics oh, of golf. Sure, yeah. that's right. So. 
Um, and then just, let's just touch on some of the things from the NFL. You know, I thought it was super interesting. You know, Saquon Barkley, first touch from a uh, line of scrimmage or in the Browns game, this preseason game on Thursday, 39 yards. And then I saw today, you know, they thought he tweaked his tweaked his leg and um, in yeah. practice, and yeah. it's all over the place saying he's all right, he's all right. Yeah, he he definitely, definitely needs to be all right. Put him on the shelf to the regular season, I think. And bringing it, you know, bringing it back, since y'all didn't talk about Ole Miss any, I'll, I'll just go ahead and mention um, Chad Kelly out there in Denver, Colorado, is being uh, – the, the fans are calling for him to become the, the backup quarterback. They're having some quarterback issues out there in Denver. In fact – Paxton Lynch, there's a GoFundMe account uh, to come up with six hundred thousand dollars to buy his contract out, so he can pack his bags wow. and leave the, oh, wow. leave the Broncos. <laughs> right. Um, That's really reassuring for him. I bet that he loves yeah. hearing that. Right, no doubt. And then there's talk about uh, Des Bryant going to oh, the yeah. Browns. It's kind of been going on for a couple of weeks. It seemed to pick up steam. And then I saw something today where Des is, is tweeted out he's he's going to get there when he feels like it, just his normal stuff. But oh yeah, yeah, you know, prima donna, prima donna. That's right, that's prima right. Um, I also saw where uh, Carmelo Anthony is looking like he might go to the uh, Houston Rockets. I think that would be interesting. Uh, if you see the Rockets, uh, you know they came up just a little bit short uh, against the Golden State Warriors, and everybody's looking for an answer for the Warriors. Yeah, uh, obviously the Lakers, but uh, it's like everybody's vying for number two. In that's the right. Last couple of years for that. It'll certainly be interesting. Let's take a two-minute break and come back and wrap up the pro, pro segment and, I guess, finish the show out for, yeah, we'll for the night. Yeah. So come back and hear us on B92 Sports Buzz. There is no better place to get all your local and complete pharmacy needs than at Clint's Pharmacy in Brookhaven. Clint's is open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and Saturday, 9 to 12. Come inside and visit the best greeting card selection in town with all cards just 99 cents. But those days you are in a hurry, you can use Clint's convenient and fast drive through line. Now inside Clint's Pharmacy is Complete Family Medical, a clinic that takes walk-ins to get you in and out. Clint's Pharmacy, 201 Highway 51 North, Brookhaven. Deer hunters, looking for the best fall seed mix on the market? Buck Busters has 36% protein, contains 8 varieties of winter forage in the basic mix, and 11 varieties in the premium mix. One bag does one acre. It's specifically formulated for the southeast. Contact your local seed dealer or Buck Busters at buckbusterseedcompany.com or call toll-free 1-800-562-4570. Buck Busters, the most complete and cost-effective seed mixes available. Hello, this is Lavelle Sullivan with Quick Lane Tire and Auto. It's back to school time, and that means getting your vehicle ready to travel for football. Right now, you can get up to $160 mail-in rebate and 90 days same as cash on new tires. These are never seen before savings, and there's never been a better time to buy, and we will meet or beat any competitor's advertised price on any of the 13 brands we're the authorized dealer for. Quick Lane Tire and Auto, next door to Sullivan Ford Lincoln, exit 40, Brookhaven. Looking for a place to catch the game on Saturdays? Come visit Magnolia Blues Barbecue Company in Brookhaven. With large TVs all around, you can order from a full menu with the best and the biggest nachos in town. Enjoy Wednesday open mic and live music on the weekends. Let Magnolia Blues take care of your next catering event. Open Monday through Friday, 3 to 10, and Saturday, 2 to 10. Magnolia Blues Barbecue in Brookhaven, 505 West Monticello Street. And welcome back to the Sports Buzz, and we want to thank our sponsors, Clint's Pharmacy, Sullivan Ford Lincoln, Magnolia Blues, and Buck Busters Seed Company. Yes. Thank you so much I mean, for we, all y'all doing. Appreciate you. Absolutely. And again, if you're out in the area, you need to come on by here and get some of these pulled pork nachos. Oh, man, they're great. Or the next time you stop by, go ahead and, you know, go ahead and splurge on an appetizer. Yeah, you can have ours. It's still not a lot here. <laughs> Yeah, honey, don't fix anything. I'm bringing nachos home. That's right, yeah. Hey, I did want to mention before we leave the whole football segment, um, Johnny Manziel. Johnny got football. His, yeah, Johnny football. Got his second start uh, for the Montreal Alouettes. Hmm. 
Uh, he went 16 for 26, 168 yards, no picks, no interceptions. So not very interesting. But They're in Canada. You and I don't know what an alouette is. I, don't know that, yeah. I do not know. Not um, that. Female owl. <laughs> Owlette. <laughs> Is it a female? I have no idea. I just, that's what it sounds like coming off to it. An owlette. All right, let's hit a little tennis news. Okay. This is interesting. Uh, this will be the first time uh, this season that the Big Four, and if you don't know who the Big Four are, it's Rafael Nadal, uh, Roger Federer, uh, Novik Djokovic, Andy Murray, are back in action in the same tournament for the first time this year. So that's really your top four players. It's the first time that they've all been – uninjured, right, okay, cool. uh, in the same tournament. So it's going to be interesting to see. So that's the first time they've been put together. Uh, another interesting thing from this weekend, Barry Bonds, number 25, is retired by the San Francisco Giants, which is going to spur the conversation. Uh, was the 762 career home runs enough to push him into the Hall of Fame? What do you think? Uh, you know, there's a lot to unpack there. I'm not sure that I feel strongly either way about it. I do. Um, I guess I know a little bit more about the Pete Rose story, and yeah. I do think they ought to let old Pete in. You it's know, time to let Pete in. Yeah, I mean it Come really on. is. But you know, maybe maybe Barry doesn't get in on the the first couple of times. But you what know. was Pete still was sports betting? Yeah, yeah, he was gambling yeah. And, and and betting on. Was he betting on the game, his game? Yeah, he was betting on his oh. game. But I think he was always betting to win. You know, he wasn't <laughs> like he was playing to lose. So. <laughs> it's, your season, I guess. It's an important distinguishing, <laughs> it's a distinguishing characteristics. Uh, you know, definitely, I think. Uh, it, just for anybody who's out there who's, who's interested, they did a poll of the Hall of Fame voters, and you've got to have 75% of the vote in order to go into the Hall of Fame. And, uh, Barry Bonds is only pulling fifty six percent right now. So these are the people that vote are Actual people that are already in the Hall of Fame, or I don't it, know how the voting works. I just know that the people that gave you. this particular percentage yeah. were are the actual voters. So it wasn't like me and you saying, "Yeah, I yeah. think you should get in." It wasn't like a presidential poll. <laughs> well, I th- I think you know, growing up, you know, just watching baseball, and I guess this is just strictly from a fan basis here, is that you know, back in that day, it was what was Mark McGuire, Barry Bonds, Sammy Sosa, Ken Griffey Jr., all the all those players that if you're a kid, and even if we bring this back to local high school, all of our perspective, our, our respective kids that are playing baseball right now, I think they kind of look to them, look to those guys as potential people, like oh, Barry Bonds needs to be in the Hall of Fame, Mark McGuire is in the Hall of Fame, all these kind of people. So I think, I think just from a fan basis and and, and for pure entertainment wise, and I guess he's, I mean, it speaks for himself. I think yes, absolutely, he deserves to get into the Hall of Fame. So um, yeah, I would I would say on, on at least my part is that you know if he de- deserves more than fifty fifty six percent of the vote to get in. I so I just think it, if it speaks for regardless of the whole juicing thing he deserves to be in the hall i gotta get my little i think we're running out of time we're so i've got to get my little nascar bit in real quickly again uh there's been really top three drivers this year you've got kyle bush which is my favorite personal favorite now he's had six wins uh, kevin harvick won this weekend he has seven wins and then martin truex jr has four wins not the disparity that we've seen in the last few years of the nascar race but Here's a few of the drivers who are on the outside looking in. Mississippi's own Ricky Stenthouse Jr. is 62, 62 points out of the playoffs, along with Paul Menard, Daniel Suarez, and Ryan Newman. Those are really your racers who are going to be pit, trying to vie for one of those last spots in the in the playoffs. So you've got about four more races uh, to get in. So any of these drivers right here are going to be trying to win. Good deal. So you all sit down and watch the whole NASCAR race, or do you tune in like the last? The truth is, minutes? I don't watch the whole race, Doc. If you're interested, so I turn it on. I like it's to background music. <laughs> <laughs> I like ambiance. I like to watch the start. All yeah. right, uh, and then you know go about your Sunday, and then check in on it, and then I always watch the last eighty laps or so. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to give that a try. Yeah, it's good. it's good fun, and I'll watch it with you, and I can I can tell you what's going on. Yeah, I'll need a little education on the. There's a lot. There's a lot more to it than just cars driven in a circle. (laughs) That's that's the education. (laughs) There's a lot more to it than uh, you know turning left. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think uh, with all that, that kind of gives us or gives you who uh, who are watching or listening, uh, uh, tuning in here tonight, an idea of what it is we wanted to bring you with Sports Buzz here. Um, you had high school and local with our all of our players to watch for the right. primetime twenty three. Uh, BA softball, BA ba- uh, football is high wire. We've got we had Mississippi State with Joe Moorhead and Ole Miss uh, mascot. Everything that you mentioned from the pros with tennis and NASCAR <laughs> and everything like that, that that's what this show is, is, is going to be about. You, we want, is this going to become a tennis show? You want to talk? Just strictly tennis? Yeah, go tennis? I don't, I don't, 
in the shark head every week. In the shark, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> go down to that. But that's you're welcome to a land shark hat if you want one. Yeah, you want one? Yeah, I'm gonna have it wearing up here. <laughs> that'll, that'll draw a crowd. You can wear that land shark hat with your maroon shirt and your gold socks. As long as it doesn't have eyes on the side of it all. With I'll the play. eyelashes, that's what I can't get. It was like, is that a girl shark? It's a female shark. Have you seen it's seen the head? That's what no, an owlette is. Yeah. It's a female shark. An owlette is a female. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Anyway, so let's uh, let's get wrapped up here tonight. We want to thank everyone who uh, who was uh, st- uh, tuning in tonight. We definitely want to thank Magnolia Blues for their hospitality, their uh, their their nachos we had here, the drinks. Um, and the, the atmosphere that we had here, and uh, also our additional uh, for, uh, sponsors, Clint's Pharmacy, Southern Ford Lincoln, uh, of course, Magnolia Blues, and Buckbuster Seed Company. Uh, before we wrap up... Can and, I say uh, something about Clint's Pharmacy? It's just so please. nice to have these local pharmacies. You know, like I know we've got some big national chain pharmacies here in Brookhaven, oh, yeah. but, I, I mean, Doc, you can speak to that. I mean, just support your local pharmacy. Mm-hmm. The service level is just so, so it's not even different. It's not even yeah. close. Yeah. It's not even close. It's kind of like getting your ear, nose, and throat service as well right now bit, yeah. yeah yeah you know so a little something about that yeah <laughs> so again that just that just helps us kind of pull into what our sponsors are uh, are uh, or who are they are and how much we we appreciate uh letting us do this this was fun this is a good little talk, just we were up here talking about sports we, we love it we uh want to support uh everything from uh local to pro so uh we'll just close it out with uh, what we've got in our upcoming games this week for high school we'll do this at the end of each show uh coming up the next couple of weeks is uh we will give you a recap of what is playing that weekend so this weekend we've got uh august 17th bogachet is at mclaurin brookhaven highs at pearl i'll actually be at that game and covering it which Bro- one uh, brookhaven at pearl hi brookhaven high school at pearl i'll be i'll be at that game you that for the, oh for, i'll be i'll be there uh, awesome. on, on site with that one uh, brookhaven, the pearl's good yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. It's a good, it's a good season open for Brookhaven High School. What I have, uh, from what I understand, Brookhaven and Natchez Cathedral. You headed down there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be, be down I'll there. be there. You heading down there? Good. Um, Doc's driving me. Perfect, y'all. Um, Sports Buzz on the road. Spinoff. Uh, Inter- uh, Enterprise at Salem, Lloyd Star at Sacred Heart, and West Lincoln at Mount Olive. So that is your uh, your local games that we have this coming up Friday. Uh, I think that's all we have for Sports Buzz. So uh, why don't we sign off? I'm Peyton Phillips. Ryan Case. Trey Waterloo. Thank you all so much for joining us. You have been listening to Sports Buzz right here on B92. We will see you back here live next week, 7 to 8, right here at Magnolia Blues on B92. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.